think from the doc there are some there are some definitely some things in the doc that you you are uh you know uh going to be completely unexpected. I don't think anyone would have thought uh, there's going to be some things that you'll, you, you would have never guessed. But uh, Wait, really? Oh, yeah. Like, in, oh, like yeah. involving EDP? Oh, uh, yeah. And, and different things that actually go on in the documentary that are, are new. Um, nothing, you know, not like making any legal accusations or anything, but just yeah. very interesting uh, scenes, I think. So I, well, I, think I heard... I heard Mudahar, I guess I can talk about this since Mudahar talked about it in okay. his stream. He said that EP says a lot of stuff that his like legal team isn't very happy with. Well, from what he said. I don't so. know the details about that. I, I, you could say that, but at the same time, I think uh, Bryant has a certain... Um, uh, he has a certain uh, free-flowing nature in how he talks. Yeah. And uh, that certainly Would you okay? Out. I film. guess the I guess to break down my my question to like a pretty simple like standpoint is like mm -hmm. does he say anything that is incriminating? I guess I don't know. I I I I think um, we go through the details of his whole life. I mean, right? I, I, the stings are a big part of the film for sure, but there's a lot of stuff beyond that. I'd say yeah. I'd say like seventy percent of the film is not about the stings. Right. Understandably. Uh, yeah, of course. Of so, course you guys want to talk about new stuff pretty much yeah, and like other so, angles. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm not a, I'm not a lawyer and I don't know to what extent uh, something could be incriminating or not, but he definitely right. does just address everything very, very plainly. And you'll, you know, yeah. it'll be up to you well, and the legal experts can yeah. decide whether one thing or not is, uh, incriminate but he doesn't beat around the bush at all i'll say that. the way the reason why i'm saying that though is because i've done an interview with brian and i know the guy just talks he talks and he does it for his, like against his own good a lot of the times like he'll literally say stuff that you're like oh like bro why like you just said that like he's definitely yeah, no, a very open he, book i have hundreds of hours I, I i honestly think hundreds of hours of footage so I wow hundreds been, of hours yeah the edit has been a substantial undertaking yeah because uh, you guys when did you guys when did you guys wrap up filming with brian like when when did that oh, kind of end? times we've i've probably i probably made three or four trips out there to him um and then different different times and um so usually spend about a week or so out there when i go and then come back and then go again and probably have one more trip to do um but yeah oh, so you're not even like completely done yet uh it's pretty much done they're just kind of some finishing finishing stuff but every time it's 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 incredibly interesting i mean like you come away with different different little you know I would yeah say unbelievable uh things he's a very very interesting individual uh even beyond uh kind of the the le legal stuff yeah well i guess another thing i want to ask is like uh because this was one of my criticisms that i do want to bring up um, you guys, did you guys compensate him in any way? Cause I know Bryant isn't going to do anything for free. So um, it's kind of one of those double edged blade swords where it's like, ah, shit. Like, did you guys have to pay him to be in this documentary? Cause it's like, uh, yeah, not, not really. I mean, um, obviously when you're doing this much time, he had a lot of take off a lot of work. So there was some kind of, uh, arrangement to make sure he didn't go broke so we can right. actually do it, but there's no profit exchange it's this is a, yeah. a massive loss i'll probably i mean you actually part might see that i mean tens of thousands of dollars go into this i'm sure this wow is limited ads so i was gonna say nobody, are you guys gonna be running ads or uh yeah i don't i really I, I i i might not i might just take it off entirely and to the extent that i do i'll make back like one third or one fifth of, of yeah uh, of it so um well, are you yeah, worried no, okay nobody, well no, Based on YouTube's track record, are you worried that they're going to take down the documentary? It's possible. It's it is possible because I was thinking about that the other day too. I was like, I was like, most EDP content, especially like when, or in my early ages of my channel, they were like taking me down every time I put like an EDP video for bullying and harassment. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's like totally possible. I do think maybe since it's um sort of involving the individual or whatever, but. You know, I mean, if it gets taken down, then I don't know. I'll yeah, that's it rough. On Patreon or something. Or yeah, Patreon right. Or I was going to say, Rumble. like, I, we were talking earlier. We're like, we think you should, like, move to Netflix. I think, like, you'd strive yeah. really well on Netflix. 
Yeah, it's possible. I really like YouTube. I like, I mean, like this type of thing wouldn't happen uh, on, on Netflix, you know, just meeting you know, right. all the people you meet and sort of the, the community aspect and whatever. So I really enjoy YouTube. Even if Yeah, a, I feel like YouTube gives you a little bit more of a uh, creative freedom when it comes yeah, to like making and, like, what you they want get to know me a bit. And I get to, con- you know, like you watch these documentaries on Netflix, like who made it right? Who made the Dan right. Snyder documentary? It's, it's not as, uh, I guess, personable in terms of like, you know, the community aspect of it, but right. You know, I, I, I can see that down the road, but for now I'm just enjoying like the, the YouTube flow. But, right. But like, yeah. for instance, like, like we have EDP now, and then obviously you did boogie. Like, I know this is kind of an early question to ask, but like, what's the future? Like, do you know who's probably going to be the next yeah, individual? Other, um, just honestly, for me is whatever is interesting. Right. I, right. And that could take a lot of forms. I think, and then also has like a, there's, there's, you know, at least a million people or something that would also find it interesting. Yeah, of um, course. And I think I went with Boogie to start because it was like, I had zero subscribers. What is something that other people care about that I can get access to? And a lot of it is this access. Like I can make a list, but right. if I can't get access, whether it's a person or a place or a thing, if I can't get access, um, then, uh, you know, like, you know, anybody could just make a, uh, a, you know, video talking about something versus like yeah. inside of the world of something. But yeah, I would say definitely, you, you, I mean, no doubt there's going to be more kind of like you fall in YouTuber type stuff. Like right. that is just an interesting. So world you, you say fall in YouTuber. What about, and I am going off what Kayla's saying. What about Shane Dawson? Uh, you know, I mean, every, anybody like that would be on the table. It's just one of those things of like a access. And then also like, even if you do get access, you have a call, you have a discussion, is there right. enough depth and is, is there enough of an incentive where this person wants to, what, what's the incentive or what's the yeah. personality style on for that person to really come out and share? I think in the case of boogie or edp you know the reason these people are doing this for essentially no money or just like food money basically is um they have a voice they want to get out there and not yeah. everyone does um so finding I, uh finding people to uh you know the, the right fit plus also yeah. it's a ton of time dude like oh absolutely uh, like you I, just like, said you just sunk tens of thousands of dollars yeah, into this for edp me, one for the subject like Right. You know, EDP is taken off. Like you got to work to the schedule, take off work, you know, f- you know, drive, drive hours of different places. It's not like this quick little podcast. So finding someone that's in a position that, you know, that makes sense for them as well. So, but there are some really cool ones. I think there, there's definitely going to be one that's going to kind of move out of the fall YouTuber one that'll come out uh, probably this year. And then, uh, oh, no, I'm kidding. Heard- yeah, so th- there'll be some, um, some, some. So if, some if you're not doing like fallen YouTubers, would you stay like on? Would you say would you stay keeping an eye on like the YouTube platform, or oh, are you going to yeah, move on dude. to like I, other? I want to do. You, I want to stay on YouTube as long as I can. I think. Yeah. Uh, you know, for me, one thing I didn't do in the boogie doc was do any type of Patreon or any type of like, you know, way to sustain this. I'm in a, I'd say, a fortunate position to not need to make yeah. money off these i guess right now but in terms of being honestly get- if i was you though if i was you i would definitely and again like this might just be me being like like a, a greedy goblin but i would try to t- definitely try to make some sort of income off of these documentaries because yeah, you i feel like you're too good more, you're too good right? at making documentaries to not try to make money off of it yeah I, I i respect that i guess for me it's it's not even just for me making the money because i'm 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 pretty satisfied where I'm at and, and right. w- w- with, with the other things I do, but in terms of making money, but with this, it's like, I, w- I don't want to make one every six months, you know, right. and, and to be able to make one every other month or one every whatever, uh, you know, you just need a team. And yeah. for me, probably the team I need, uh, you know, it's, it's going to take uh, 10, 15, 20,000 a month. I was going to say, yeah, it's Uh, expensive just to kind of get, I mean, just, just the travel expenses on uh, the EDP doc alone probably was in like the 20 ish thousand. I mean, by the time you do flights, you have even one crew member with you, two hotels, two flights, plus the baggage, bringing crew every, you know, bringing uh, equipment. It's just like wild. 
uh, the amount of cost and and the YouTube is not really inherently designed for that type of a uh, cost structure for their videos. I mean, obviously there are some people like a Mr. Beast or whatever that have, you know, figured that out and get the scale of views. But yeah. I really don't think that this uh, video will get at full fully monetized if monetized at all. And I might even be tough have yeah. to not monetize it uh, just from a, you know, standpoint which is yeah, yeah which kind of sucks because it's like i feel like uh you need creative freedom but at the same time you need to get paid yeah right at the end of the day like you want to be able to because as soon as you mentioned mentioned pedophile or any of these like words all, that youtube doesn't like i'm not blurring even i i, I don't know if kayla's in here but when i interviewed kayla i actually said cp i'm like ah, oh, just go ahead and say it she's like i can just like, say it yeah just say the full like, word hey we're already we're already uh jumped in so, yeah yeah i i i launched a patreon um just like after the boogie because i didn't think the boogie doc was gonna get that many views oh everybody. dude it blew up everyone yeah. was talking about penguin zero like everyone was talking about this documentary i even did a video because i was like i gotta talk about this because it was yeah. such a crazy documentary yeah so and for, um, yeah so i i launched that and i just threw it in the the, the description so it really hasn't uh garnered a uh like a ton of traffic because i don't really like posts all like that i'm not like posting on social media so but I'll, yeah. I'll i'll definitely put the patreon i i really hope i mean if people like it people like the edp doc or the boogie doc and want more of it like patreon's gonna probably be like the only way to to get this to be less than a twice a year type yeah. thing i mean um, well the thing is like you have fans though like people like your documentaries like when i first heard like i don't know again i kind of want to get into this but you had no idea that edp was going to leak anything about this documentary right yeah it wasn't like they signed like, an uh, nda it was just confusion i think because like he was you know he did the shoot and he was like hey yo you have any photos i'm like yeah bro here and then uh, he like posted i didn't know it wasn't like and i i woke up from like a nap or something and i saw it yeah and i'm like hey hey it's already out it was you know hey it's like it's no big deal like i'm not uh i mean it was kind of like a random scene anyways and like i think yeah created all the drama in sort of the boogie world because well, yeah boogie like because he like i feel like if he just posted the pictures of like him like mean mugging the camera and then the other picture of him just kind of like doing yeah, whatever but yeah. the thing is though he posts a picture of boogie so now people are like oh well why is why is boogie with edp like yeah, that's why i was confused like i was like a what's... random and insignificant part of the documentary and honestly i don't even know if i'm going to keep it in because oh really uh, yeah, no, and I, I had, I had sort of mentioned this. They talked about that the, the Lol Cow podcast, but um, the Lol Cow, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, Are you okay? My, oh, I have a question about you about the Lol Cow. Are you yeah, okay with like what Boogie's saying on the Lol Cow podcast? Because he's, he's kind of a loose cannon when it comes to him yeah. talking about things. No, for sure. I talked to Boogie. We talk fairly regularly. You know, I mean, yeah. I respect. He's, he's going to have different takes on stuff. I, I don't, I don't take a. Uh, I don't take stuff too personally that is right. on sort of a, a podcast. So, yeah, I think he, yeah, because I, I know there was one where he kind of like said some shit about you. I don't know the context because uh, I, I don't he, really know, think, but yeah, he, I think he said that, like he wouldn't piss. He would if I was like on fire. He wouldn't piss. The, you know. Say yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he said he said I, some I negative things about means, you. I don't think he means that. I I think he's you know riled up and, and yeah and talking i don't think he's well lying. clearly he, clearly he's not mad at you since he's still friends with you after the documentary even came out and it's yeah. not like a lot of people are criticizing being like well obviously it's him uh what is it glazing boogie i'm like have you guys watched it like have you actually watched the documentary because it doesn't seem like you are like it seems like you went pretty hard on him in terms of like what you've showed and like going into the deep dive yeah, definitely of boogies uh definitely definitely wasn't a promotional video but yeah hey, like that's I mean, what i was trying to say biggest, um if you look at google trends for him it was the biggest spike in sort of search traffic for his brand. oh of course like even his Probably twitter he became since, more active yeah since the frank castle thing it, it, it kind of sparked a lot of you know while it sparked a lot of drama it sparked a lot of just conversation about him and yeah and, you know i think probably helped the, the the podcast and other things so i you know it's just kind of you know i mean it's just kind of a silver lining i hope and he's a cool dude i mean he's definitely yeah i mean actually cool. even watching the documentary i like think he has some things going on but i don't think he's like a bad person like even when i was like seeing all his controversies growing up like being on youtube and stuff i'm like he doesn't seem like a bad person he just seems like misguided and he needs to just iron out some of his issues i think like yeah, at the end of the that's, day that's a good way to put it I think like also a big thing like I was concerned about is what is Boogie's whole point of being in the documentary 
Like, I just don't, didn't really understand that. Like, when I was talking about it, I was like, I don't really understand why Boogie's even in it. You know what I mean? Yeah. From a certain oh, standpoint. EDP? Yeah, with the EDP. Yeah, not not yeah, the Boogie document. You know, I understood that, but... Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, there's there's a context in which it sort of fits in. Uh, if, if, it, if it does stay in the film, it, it'll make sense for the, the story arc. Right. Um, but, dude, there's a lot of things, um, I think, that... Um, is like there's a fine line and a gray area, I guess, of like enter things that are entertaining, but also right. um, bring to light a certain truth, and um, you know, creating a situation between someone like Boogie and someone like EDP to have a conversation. It's in, it's going to be interesting, right? And yeah, I was going to say kind I of that psychology. In. Yeah, yeah, that's the world like, I live in, and is like whatever is interesting, and I, if I can create those moments. Um, and it can bring to life, uh, you know, truth and a certain entertaining reality. Um, uh, you know, I'm going to take a shot at doing yeah. it. I, and, but some scenes, dude, they were like, even with the boogie doc, you've like, there was a ton of scenes that just after the fact, you just look at, it, you're like, all right, it's not entertaining. It's not that interesting. We tried it. I might've even like, you know, you know, uh, pulled some strings to make it happen, but right. I'm dropping it. Right. Because like. A lot, a lot of times you might put all this time and money into a scene and then you look at it in the final edit and if it's just not good, you don't have to just, you don't have to put it in just cause you, cause you shot it. Right. Yeah. Or because you put money into it, you can just drop it. And I would say even with the boogie doc, that being able to do that definitely saves a lot of that dead space because, uh, yeah. and I would say, you know, we'll see. And also definitely the fact that it got leaked. Part of it was like it was um, just going to be this kind of random, you know, callback. But then it got leaked. So we'll see. I I don't know. I'm, I'm still 50 50 on it. So, yeah. Well, I think like because I remember Boogie said that there's a point where he like yells at EDP. Like I think he tweeted out saying like, oh, my club paid me to go yell at a pedophile. Of course, I'm going to say yes to it. Does like sure. that actually happen? Uh, there, there's some, you know, there was some spirited discussion. I think Boogie definitely, uh, speaks in, um, hyperbole and I don't, you know, and, and, and sort of for this, particularly to, to put it into a tweet, to be able to ex express himself, um, yeah. to the extent he's like screaming at him the whole scene. That's not r really the case, but there's definitely some spirited feedback that he gave. So, um, yeah, I, I would say that. The scene, definitely the uh, the leaked photo of them um, eating food together. I obviously, if you don't like boogie, you can spin that in all types of ways. Well, of course. Like when I first saw it, I'm like, well, the thing with the the document po pictures that were posted, it just didn't really correlate with what boogie was saying. Because in the post, it's again, it shows them, like you said, like them eating at a scene or whatever, like eating McDonald's or whatever that was. And another one is boogie having a glass of wine, like looks like he's having a chit chat with edp on the other side of the the, the room so it's mm -hmm. kind of like oof, like it does kind of look like you're breaking be bread with edp i guess is what some people were saying but i mean i i assume that's just strictly like set kind of stuff like it's kind of a set concept yeah i mean like everything you know unless you're just following someone around with a camera 24 7 just capturing like everything little they're doing anything that's sort of you know set up is gonna be mm -hmm. Some people call that a set, but you know, you just want to, you know, some people that make documentaries, they'll follow people around for two, three years. I was going to say, they yeah, do it at this very, I mean, there's a whole spectrum of how nonfiction content can be made. On one side, you have the purest documentary, you have like sort of a science film. On the other spectrum, you might have like TLC, right? Right. Uh, my, and there's and, and reality TV show and keeping up with the Kardashians and and there's all types of range in between. I probably fall somewhere in between. You know, there's a lot of stuff I do that is is definitely a little bit of TLC and keeping up with the Kardashians. I mean, like it's there, like a lot of the scenes in the boogie, are, are, you know, are designed to be funny, designed to bring to life a certain humor. And yeah. then other scenes are designed to maybe be a bit more matter of fact. So I think that um, everyone has a different sensibility to the type of documentation that they expect out of a certain right. subject. I well, the thing is, though, it's like with you, it's like you're trying to put out documentaries, but it's like you I feel like you like I can tell you're a busy man. You don't have time to follow a certain person around for three years for to sure. make a documentary. Yeah. And I just don't think that, you know, you know, to, to the extent that I need to set a scene, 
you have to do it in such that you can capture the reality to, just as long as you're showing it in a way that brings to life the reality that is there. Um, yeah. And ultimately an entertaining version, entertaining. Well, yeah, uh, of course. Yeah. Fiction, right. It's, it's well, like you, like you said, you, you have hundreds of hours of EDP talking, right? Like hundreds of hours and you got to find a way to cut that down to like an hour and a half documentary. That's going to be interesting. Yeah. No, it's, so that, it's an incredibly long, I mean, it's an incredibly long process. And like, I, I happen, of all the things that I do personally in the project, project, I guess other than getting access, I'm pretty good at like just kind of, you know, creating relationships and, and, and doing yeah. that. But um, is the editing for me personally. So just that's, you know, if, if that Patreon works out, that'll be the first. I'm, uh, dude, I'm sure it will. I'm sure your yeah, Patreon will work out because... Well, That'd be great. That'd be great. I mean, I'm sure it will. I don't see why it wouldn't. I mean, this next one's probably going to get quite a lot of views. People want to support these documentaries. I mean, if you ask me where I would put my money when it comes to documentaries, it would probably be the Mike Clum channel because you've been on, the only one making these kind of high level documentaries recently, yeah, right? I appreciate that, bro. For me, like, I just used to sit around and wait. I think back in like 20. 15 2016 i started to really i think i saw the enron smartest guys in the room documentary and that right that was like holy shit dude like you know the music in that and like just the vibe i remember like exactly where i was watching that and i was like this is sick and i just started like searching and searching i just and i watched all the kind of 2008 financial crisis documentaries right and i got into sort of like american greed and then i got into um a lot of these other but I eventually I, I like started to run out. Right. <laughs> so part of it was just like, I'm just sitting around. I have nothing to watch. So I'm like, you know, and I was getting a little bored with my other business ventures. Um, just, you know, or, or some other things I sort of pulled back on and, and, right. um, you know, I was just like, Hey, let's do something new and like, Hey, well let's make content. And then I just kind of stumbled upon the idea of it being documentaries. Cause I, it's just like dude that's what i all that i watch so well exactly yeah. yeah well the thing is like that's gonna probably go into my next question is like do you have any film schooling like prior to doing these documentaries or was this like just a random endeavor that you're like i'm bored i like documentaries let's just do one well i went to films for like a few months i dropped out i spent a summer with my friend austin um just kind of helping him film music videos and like commercials out in his hometown. And then I came home and then I think I bought, I bought the camera that he had, which at the time, this is like 2012. It was yeah. Like a Canon DSLR. And then I actually just started filming music videos, like for rappers in the Cleveland. Area oh really? Where yeah. Where I'm from. I did a lot of music videos. I would just like go on Twitter, DM rappers and then, you know, they would get back to me and I'd sell them a music video for like two, three hundred bucks. And I like I pretty much dropped out of college. I was making a few grand a month, just living at home, doing music right. videos. And then eventually I got a commercial project that paid me like a few grand. I wow. Like, oh, shit, dude. That, that's it's like, a damn, that's money. a that's a big bump. Yeah. Like, yeah. And then and then I got paid five grand. I got paid ten grand. And you're like, oh, OK, like I can. I can really get some, um, you know, get some get some resources by by doing this sort of commercial yeah videos commercially so that i that's what i did from pretty much 2013 pretty much till the boogie doc 2023 and i still own the company it's it's um it's pretty pretty uh findable online type of my name in and uh yeah we do really cool work we do a lot of commercials i also have um business and other sort of youtube stuff e-commerce but yeah right. I, I didn't do f film school because like the best way to learn is to start like making stuff even at the smallest level for like a friend's band is like the first thing I did. And then I did like uh, my mom, I think, hired a carpet cleaning company and that I did a video for that carpet cleaning company. So, you know, that, that I just learned pretty much by doing. And then I most of my my sort of come up was making like kind of these two minute business videos. It's like a company needed like t uh, a little video that was two minutes long. So it, you kind of learn how to edit these little mini doc documentaries for businesses, you know, in this really in taking like the most uninteresting stuff and making it interesting. So, you know, the second you kind of get a guy like Bookie on camera, you're like, oh, shit, like this is this is like, you know way more easy to make interest oh absolutely yeah it kind of it kind of does itself kind of when it comes yeah, to yeah well he like with edp talking. too 
Like I can imagine you just put EP, oh, yeah, EP in front EP of a camera and he just goes. Man. He, yeah. he is, you know, for better or for worse, there will be definitely parts of this that show his humor because, you know, yeah. that's that's part of who he is. I've said that too. Like yeah. I've told people I hate EDP. I, I despise him for, for obviously many, many reasons that are very obvious. But at the end of the day, I'm like, he's still funny. He's extremely charismatic. Yeah, and I'm like, man, but that can't taint filming, you though. There are times filming, I just died laugh. I mean, like he'll say yeah. something. It's just un unexpected unhinged and you know it's it, random that, that's the thing yeah. that's what makes him funny is that you don't expect yeah, him and like, you expect him to say yeah. everything but you don't expect him to say something in a very certain moment and then he says it and it's like well that was actually kind of funny i mean he's still an awful person but i've told people that i'm like i think he's funny but i still think he's a garbage person <laughs> yeah yeah I, I mean he's a definitely super complicated in that way as as and as boogie and i think um you know, for me, like I've, I've always, uh, even just in my personal life, I, you know, I have friends that, uh, you know, are complicated people and I've always yeah. been able to sort of navigate pretty well and, and sort of manage emotions. I don't get super, you know, angry or, or yeah, exactly full towards, you know, if something happens, it's sort of, it's sort of, you know, I, I guess people are complicated even someone like edp or bryant yeah. i mean it's well of it's, course i know yeah. he's he's definitely got some stuff right like i don't think most normal people can look at edp or bryant or whatever and be like yeah that's a normal sane person he's definitely got some issues and i think yeah, a lot of people like, i'm not a psychologist but i think it's pretty normal that we all know that he definitely has some sort of social thing going on but uh, I mean, I he's still a bad person. I mean, I still agree with that. But I feel like there's got to be somewhat of a mutual understanding if you want to, like, for your instance, make a documentary about him. You can't just come in there and be like, "Fuck you, EDP, you predator." Yeah, no, like, and that's not even my, you know, personal view. I think that, like, mm -hmm. me, I, you know, if in the world of interesting, which is like the world that I want to live in, there are characters and people and situations that other people are going to deem. Um, evil or bad or whatever you yeah. want to sort of call it and i just sort of have to be agnostic to that um and and to not get super affected one way or the other and i don't you know i, I think that you know we could talk about the morality of his actions and of course you know, yeah but but that to me is not where i sort of i guess probably fit in in the sort of uh i would say like world, you know? i would say in terms of like the documentary itself is kind of your position on the matter already like you're making a documentary you're talking about it you're interviewing people you're bringing all these different opinions it's like it's actually kind of smart to kind of have this level-headed understand who you're dealing with but don't let it you know control the documentary in general kind of have a uh, kind of like this view of like i'm gonna make yeah, this documentary people, happen yeah and, and yeah. a lot of people, you need to maintain a certain context. It's like there's a lot of people to this planet. There's a lot of people that tried to meet up with minors. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of people that are YouTubers that were fallen. And it's, a, you know, it's serious. There are definitely very serious themes in the film. But yeah. We have to, you know, come back to Earth and recognize this is a, a, a documentary going on YouTube that yeah. is is for you know to just be interesting right i mean i'll yeah. say that like, there's definitely parts that are going to be very eerie and very off-putting a lot of people that are going to probably just stop watching at a certain point it's just like it's too weird it's i feel too... like yeah because i think that's important though because that's edp's life in a nutshell it's yeah. extremely serious what he did was very serious and obviously gainered all this attention but at the same time edp's life is also in itself such a funny story to an extent yeah, and like there are there are parts in this even so far where it's like it's absolutely hilarious you would have thought this guy wrote out there are things that he'll say i'm like how did you come up with that right now did you it's like yeah. that was like a, a team of snl writers couldn't have scripted something as wild yeah. and hilarious as that and and that's it's just sort of the the magic i guess but with the the up. other hand of it though is you're still going to show the darker parts too yeah. like that was one of my criticisms i didn't want a documentary that's just glazing him because i've dealt with edp i know how easy he is to like manipulate situations and all of a sudden you completely forget that he is a bad person in that moment and you go you know what if this guy wasn't a predator he'd be a good dude oh wait but he is a predator so I'm glad that you're going to kind of hit both sides. And I think that is important. Yeah, all to kind angles, of go. And he, he, he doesn't beat around the bush on anything. I'll say that right. everything is on the table. There's nothing, uh, pretty nothing off limits. And I do think that 
Um, yeah, I, I think that it's just going to be super interesting for people to see uh, where his mind goes and, and who he is. Um, yeah, I, 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 it'll definitely have a lot of, I, I imagine, mixed reactions. Yeah, well, that, that's going to kind of be my next question is like, do you feel any pressure in terms of expectations? I mean, with the Boogie one, that was kind of you being like, this is my first documentary. You know, you'd even think it was going to get that many views, but now you're going into your second one. And there's definitely like, especially with me, and I don't want to put pressure on you, but I have high expectations of your work. You yeah, know what I mean? Like, I really have like sure. a lot of faith of this. Yeah, I had like f four other documentaries in the works during the boogie and it, it was clear that like not even from a production value standpoint it's it's easy to make something look good but just like yeah. you know you realize how quickly you realize what topics people really want to hear about versus those that um you know are 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 interesting and uh but uh don't have maybe that sort of like hit hit x factor but yeah. um in the case of edp um yeah it's it's definitely some pressure but dude you know i've been you know i've done you know it's business right i mean it's of course it's, yeah it's, and, and all i can do is like just make the best thing i can i'm i definitely am um fortunate to not have to get it out in any particular time frame i don't have any yeah. sponsors i don't have any whatever so that's crazy whatever. you don't have sponsors like if you yeah. told me you did like i would be like you're lying yeah like there's I no mean, way I, I, I spent my whole twenties building business that is still around today and, and, and doing well. And, and uh, right. I, I do, I'm spending a lot of time on these documentaries right now, but it's definitely not my full time thing. I have, you know, other businesses that, that I, I yeah, of course. Do. I mean, I think but, you so, should do documentaries full time. If like, I'm being perfectly honest with you. Cause yeah, I feel I mean, like it, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's certainly, you know, I will kind of depend on the, sort of the the outcomes of some others but yeah i would say in terms of like the boogie versus this you know if anything i stepped up the production value um just because i knew the there was an audience for it with boogie you yeah. know you shot a certain amount of days you brought a certain crew you kind of brought a certain push to it i definitely tried to make it as good as i could but i didn't realize you know it's going to get seen by penguin zero or I think it's yeah like all these people you know, talking about it or this or that I, I i i figured maybe it hit within kind of the boogie community and maybe through the algorithm just kind of naturally climb its way to maybe a million views it was like yeah. my dream situation and then uh once penguins did the uh uh, video talking like, about yeah, yeah. Like, dude, he fuck, sings man? your praise too. I remember seeing it. He's like, he's like, this was a great documentary, and yeah, I'm like, dude, that's I mean, actually that's, crazy. That's, that's definitely a life changing sort of situation as it relates to this kind of uh this business. So uh yeah, there's definitely pressure, but I you know I think it's fun and you know it's like ultimately you do your best, you put it out, and you know yeah. I mean, just kind of go. I think there. like the biggest thing, like especially for me, like making videos about EP, it's like I always got to remind myself that. Like, obviously me, I kind of, I wouldn't say I have an obsession, but I do keep tabs on his life every once in a while. But I'm like, there are people out there, tons of people who know who EDP is, but they have no idea what he's been up to. They don't even know that he groomed another child. They don't even know there's a documentary coming out. They don't even know that he has an AI girlfriend. Like there's all these things. So I feel like it's, it's interesting that you came along and you're going to actually do a documentary kind of letting people know, Hey, he's still out there. He's still doing degeneracy. He's still, you know, there's all these different aspects to his life. So I think that would that's going to be really interesting. Hello. Oh, I think I killed him. I think I killed him, guys. Ah, EDP documentary will be a banger. Hopefully. I mean, I have a lot of high expectations for it. What's up, dude? Sorry about hey, that. Hey, you good? You good? <laughs> yeah, my phone died. I just you know. Oh shit! Okay. I was just uh, zoned out there for a bit, but uh. Oh, it's all good. Yeah, let's. I I I probably got ten, fifteen more minutes. So yeah, sure. Yeah, let's just. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna go through some questions people are asking. So yeah. Kayla actually asked this. What's your advice about college, and like kind of the whole concept <laughs> well, of college? I don't know if I'm like a educational expert. I would say if um, I don't know. I mean, depending on your personality, I think if you don't have college, you need to have certain. You have need to have a certain uh, opportunity making skills, right? Absolutely, and some people yeah. Are are have a certain knack for that, certain person ability to network independently of school or a system. So I think it really just depends on your personality, knowing yourself. It was kind of a cliche advice, but um, for me, no, I was sense, always though. someone that could 
send a cold email or like, you know, get on a call with someone and meet someone or develop skills just through my own personal interests and research. But there are certain fields that are not networking oriented that are, do require uh, sort of the traditional uh, college route. So just know your personality and know what you're trying to do. And, um, you know, uh, I would I, I would say that. Yeah, for sure. No, that's good. Um, there's been like I went to college for a year just yeah. to like do my upgrades. And there's definitely things you can learn in college, um, even though it's mostly for stuff on paper. But for instance, I took like cognitive studies and stuff like that. And I think that helped me in terms of like my YouTube channel and stuff to like really understand certain, certain situations and to kind of help. Like I took a little bit of a journalist class, like I end up like getting out of it, but I feel like some of those skills do transfer over. But like in terms of business related, I know lots of people who are better businessmen and women than people who have actually gone degrees, right? It really depends on the person and you're kind of, uh, like you said, like being able to outsource and yeah, uh, you know, get resources. I mean, there's, yeah. there's, there's the business of like creating a business from scratch pretty much requires like a certain, it's, it's mostly psychological, like a certain psychological state of, 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 you know, highly disagreeable, highly sort of opportunistic, highly, you know, I would say con skills of convincing people but if you need someone to, you know, audit your P and L and do certain, you know, that you're going to want someone that probably went to finance school, right? I mean, so both of those are business, but I would say yeah. entrepreneurship, developing a business um, from scratch, which is a, a form of business, I guess. Uh, yeah, definitely, you're not going to particularly learn that uh, in any yeah. way other than just by probably you learn most of those skills in childhood, just you know. All right. So my next question, uh, has Mike spoken to any of his former friends like Philippe? I reached out to Philippe, uh, uh on Facebook. I uh, wasn't able to kind of make that connection. Um, oh man. Totally, totally would interview him. If he got back to me, I'd, I'd try to make it work, fly him out, go to him, whatever. But that did not, uh, that did not happen. So, yeah, it would be, it would be interesting for sure. If you're able to interview like some of his old friends or like yeah. people who kind of, Aban uh, well, he says abandon him or whatever, but yep. we know why they left. But yeah, I, I agree. But you know, you 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 try and you hit emails and see who gets back to you. But yeah, that that's not one. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm sure it's already going to be a very full documentary already. Um. So Doug says Wings uh, said Mike kept reasking him questions until he answered them yeah, a certain way, that. so I he saw, could get sound bites. Is that, that true? Yeah, I mean that's pretty much gonna be true. Um, I I saw that. That was that was uh, interesting. Yeah, that I pretty much do that with everyone all the time. I mean, when you just kind of re-ask you know, the questions. Oh, for sure, because like, um, like, all right, you spend tens of thousands of dollars to do a, a project. You're flying all the way across the country, sometimes for these really tiny, short segments. Right. That, you know, and let's say somebody says, Hey, I really like going to the store. And that was right. your answer. They might say that with a certain tonality at the beginning or the end of the sentence that works for mm -hmm. a certain, depending on what's leading into um, that segment before that. So the way someone says something, having options, having different tonalities, having different you know, let's say that the, the sound bite before this is like super, he's super excited and then it cuts into him saying something very calmly. It's not going to gel well. So you need a lot of options. You need a lot of takes of stuff. So you re-ask the same question, have people restate things um, many times. It, it, right. It, you know, because uh, you could do it and like, oh, I'm going to only ask a question one time and however they say it is how they say it. It's just... Dude, I don't. Well, was I don't, this supposed uh, to be like? Was this supposed to be controversial? Because in my personal opinion, I'm like, I think it's common knowledge that everyone knows that in documentaries and in movies, they do that. They'll get yeah, you to yeah. re-say and take multiple takes. I would imagine the the criticism, if there was one of me, would say, "Well, maybe I'm trying to ask him questions multiple times to get him to say something, um, like you know, uh, off color yeah. or or incorrectly, so I can use that one." Yeah. Uh, you know, I guess if I was trying to do that, that would definitely be nefarious. But um, if you ask anyone that I uh, interviewed for everything, it's kind of like, hey, like, I'm going to ask the same question multiple times. Now, I did in the case of Wings, 
And I, when I go on the Lowell Cop podcast, I'll, I'm definitely going to talk to him about it. Right. He also, you know, I, the audio, like I did a, a lot. Most of the times I have one or two people with me, right? Like a little crew, right? So that like somebody can do audio. Cause we, sh- I shoot with three cameras. There's usually three camera angles going at any time. When I went to do wings, I was on like the final leg. I just spent two days in Texas and I was on like kind of on the final leg of this trip. I was doing it alone. So I went out there and um, I was by myself. I'm filming on three cameras plus recording audio all by myself. Wow. And, you know, I forgot to click record on audio for the first, he said hour and a half. It was 30 minutes. So I wasn't recording audio for the first 30 minutes. And, you know, in those moments, I've done this before. This happens every now and then. You just got to call it out and say, listen, dude, I wasn't recording. We're already here. Let's let's do it. Right. It sucks. Right. It's, it's definitely unprofessional. You don't want to do that. But mistakes do happen. And uh, so we did kind of kind of part of the interview again. I didn't like totally try to re- replicate the exact same interview. But, yeah, even in within the interview, whether it's with Wings, whether it's with um, uh, EDP or whoever, like you'll ask a question. They'll say something like, oh, OK. Like, like, and then you're not going to ask the same question immediately because you don't want to like fatigue them. You'll probably go to a few other questions. And then you ask that other question again, if in the back of your head, you're like, all right, that was interesting. But the way he said it or the way they said it is going to be hard in the edit. So let me get another right. version of it so that it, it, it maybe they say it in a way that's more conducive to actually make it into because it's not we're not writing a book here. You're not transcribing what they're saying and putting right. it on paper, the tone, the level of excitement sort of the maybe there's something that happened in the background like a dog barked right and then you don't want to like also derail the conversation it's like oh a dog bark let's do it again because like to them now they're like oh i have to say it like i said and usually they don't now yeah it. now they're like gonna they're say like it kind of funky or exactly. miss something you yeah have to, you have to keep it conversational while still getting another take and sometimes you end up if it's something that they said that was super interesting and i think in the case of wings he was saying some super interesting things um, you know, some of it were like super funny. So I'm like, Hey, I, I just want, I just want three, four takes of it, but I get it. I mean, he also was sick and right. he definitely still let me do it. And we had a date schedule. He stuck to the date. So I imagine he was tired, probably didn't really want to be filming, but was doing it. anyway. Yeah. So I appreciate like his time, but yeah, uh, I definitely, definitely ha- asked him. A- I was going to say, that's kind of the struggle when you work with, well, I'm not going to say lol cows. But uh, it's like it seems like they're gonna take things about you and just kind of talk about it, like with Boogie. Like he I talks mean, a lot of shit about you. Yeah, <laughs> it's like that's like what, like that's the world you're getting into. It's not like you know you go make a commercial for a business. Like you, it, it's one thing, but if you're gonna make yeah. it, get into this world as part of the arena, because I, I already like just doing stuff with YouTubers. Like a lot of YouTubers yeah. don't do filmmaking, so it, it's definitely like a different strategy a different approach yeah. like this the setup time the teardown time the lighting audio even like sometimes the tonality like a lot of people are used to talking into camera so they're the way they're talking you know some people don't talk as naturally because they're like very they're not used to kind of having these sort of common documentary style interview type stuff but right. um yeah no i mean he, he he said all that and uh um you know, it's all good, dude. I, well, I don't know if he meant it. I didn't see the clip. I didn't, I didn't even know about that. But uh, I thought I mean, we maybe... cool. I had a good time. I yeah. <laughs> I, I think he was sick and probably just want to go to sleep. So. All right. Uh, just we'll do a couple more questions because I think you got to go, right? Yeah, pr- probably. Go yeah. Okay. Uh, so my friend Destructor said, hey, Mike, is there any way that you need help with the EDP documentary? Hey, man. Um, sure. I, mean, I need tons of help. I don't know. Uh you know, feel free to hit me up over email or whatever. Um, yeah, I think I think you have your email, don't you? Like, uh, yeah, it's uh, just Mike at clumgroup.com. I mean, um, but if nothing else, I need help getting the word out there. So, yeah, Destructor, he's done tons of videos about it. So, on whatever. I mean, yeah, um, if that makes sense for you. But oh, well, we're yeah. we're gonna we're gonna be reacting to your documentary when it comes out. Like, we're all gonna do awesome, like a reaction live stream. I mean, as long as you don't take us down for it. But <laughs> oh, absolutely not. I'll be happy to call in. Just uh, just uh, hit me up. I'm sure I'll see you pop up. And uh, yeah, we'll definitely. Like, I think me, my friend Rance, Destructor, maybe even Kayla. I think we're all just gonna react to it and and see like see what's up with it because i think we're all kind of like really excited for it yeah dude so sounds cool uh hold on uh does anybody have any more questions because uh 
I think he's got to head out. But uh, if you guys want to ask questions, ask him real quick. Kalis has e-commerce advice. <laughs> e-commerce advice? <laughs> well, you know, I, I guess, um, let's see. Uh, I, I don't know. E-commerce is pretty broad. I would say, uh, I would say if you have, a YouTube channel, you know, uh, try to sell something that relates to why people watch what, what you make, you know? So, but, uh, there's all types of ways to do e-commerce. Some people run ads and they make money. Some people promote it on their YouTube channel. So, but yeah, yeah it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard to answer that. Eh? <laughs> yeah, Kay yeah. Kayla, Kayla is definitely, uh, she, she's, um, uh, Definitely a funny and there's a lot of funny moments in yeah. Interview, so well, uh, she told me you guys filmed in like a a gym yeah, no, that at was, two a.m. or something. I was like, like, oh wow. I was like I um, what were we shooting that? There was a definitely one of the most wild scenes. Uh, we were filming a scene went way over, way 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 over. And oh, yeah. know, I was calling uh, her manager, just like, hey, I need another hour. Hey, we need another hour. And that's one of those things that appears on the surface. It's like, definitely that's unprofessional. It's not how you do it. But some things when you're doing these documentaries just come up and it's like, I'm on this shoot right now. And what I'm getting is golden. I have to keep doing this. So right. yeah, she was super flexible. I like, ended up filming at like two in the morning at, um, at like two in the morning in this like gym of a, like a random hotel in LA and then uh, was able to use like this back black backdrop to make make it look serious. Cool. Yeah, yeah, serious. Yeah. And then actually, I ended up doing it again because, like, then you know, just the more you learn about these topics, like sometimes you look back, like, ah, I should have asked that, or should have asked, you know, other you know things. So we, we kind of have a backup interview as well that we did uh, probably just like a month ish ago. So oh wow, so it's pretty recent. Yeah, yeah, we did the first one probably back in February. Then again, I guess here in April. But yeah, she's she's a good interview. It's gonna be definitely interesting. A lot of uh, yeah, I hope it's interesting like... things were said, and uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, my friend Destructor says I'll shoot you a DM on Instagram and we can chat about some things. Cool, man. Oh, um. Yeah. So Doug says, why did EDP agree to the documentary? Will he be promoting it on his own website? I don't know if he'll promote it. Um, I guess that's up to him. I think for him, it's like, hey, people are already making these documentaries with or without him. Yeah. And I think, why not get your voice involved and just share yourself? I do think that, like, think about the nature of any content creator. Like, what they're doing already is documenting their life. So, oh, absolutely. A lot of people, as long as you're respectful with it, a lot of people are open to want to get have their life documented and i don't i don't think edp would be any different i mean he's already was a content creator and is a content creator so probably just a natural extension i was very on the first call that was very clear like hey there's you know pretty much can't really be anything off limits we just have i i wouldn't even make the documentary if we couldn't address yeah things well that's forward. that was the strange thing i brought up because like when i dealt with edp when i did my interview with him is he was extremely strict about what you could talk to him about He's like, you say any troll stuff, I'm leaving. You bring up anything, you bring up any situations, I'm leaving. He was like, I'm going to take your money and just dip. So that's why a lot of us were like, wow, he actually like agreed to this. That's yeah. pretty insane. Yeah, I mean, like everyone has a different approach to content. You know, I, I think that like your brand, might, you know, has a certain edge to it or, and other people have a certain yeah. opinions that they put out there for me. I just try to be like professional, straightforward, like show and make interesting stuff and like um i don't you know he was uh definitely thoughtful you know because i didn't he didn't know me i think i don't even think he had seen the boogie documentary because he's not really even all on youtube all like that no um, he's on the internet but he's not on youtube a whole yeah, lot like he's, like, he's like, definitely on other he platforms his, his particular niche he's, he's you know even like the stuff he consumes so he had, he didn't know anything about me and we talked it was a you know had an honest phone call and i think um just kind of worked to end up doing it and you know i would say the process was a lot of fun it was it was also it's there are certain parts that are fun it's it's just been you know i would say generally um an interesting project and uh working with him and um but uh yeah i guess he probably did it for the same reason most people want to do documentaries that they want to get their voice heard 
and they want yeah. to share their story. And um, does he try to like twist anything? Like I know. Sorry, this is probably like cutting your channel. I'm really sorry. I'm trying to like no, <laughs> let you go dude. here. But uh, like my, I guess one of my questions would be like, does he bring up this setup? Because I think in Czech Goldstein, I'm not sure if you're like that familiar with like yeah, him yeah. saying that it was a setup and it was actually an interview he, or something. I'll, or I'll just say this. He takes all of it head on. And really? It, yeah. They're, um, I'm not Even the Obama AI thing. stuff. Wow. <laughs> yeah, nothing. There is no... Um, you can't say that he like beat around the bush. I mean, there are definitely some stuff that people will hundred percent disagree with and hate and whatever that he says. Yes. But if you want his unfiltered thoughts uh, directly, this is what yeah. that documentary gets into. It, it there's nothing I you know, and, and a lot of people are not going to like it. Um, a lot of people will find it interesting, but it's definitely. Uh, you can't say that he's like you know swindling himself out of a question or anything. Right. He he tells you what he thinks, and um, he, he, you know it's it makes for compelling and interesting. That's the thing thoughts. about him though is he's kind of a weird double coin where I feel like there's sometimes where he does talk about it and he's very open with how he actually feels about stuff and then there's other times where i go on his website and he's just going in these massive rants saying everyone's lying y'all hating on me blah, blah blah and then he says oh i was clearly set up by what was it uh wavelength productions yeah but then he yeah. comes out with an apology and then he takes it back saying actually i'm not sorry i was apologizing to my family and it was just like so it'd be interesting if he does like just fully talk about it like openly in this Dude, documentary, we talk about which everything. So like if, if that approach is taught everything in his life, every you know from the past to current, everything. So you know it 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 to me also like if I'm filming with anybody and I feel like they're giving me some type of marketing version of themselves, it's yeah. super uninteresting, and I probably wouldn't have even if that was the footage we got, I probably wouldn't even put it out. I would just been yeah. Like, yeah. Well, do, do you know who I uh, do you know who Oompaville is? Oompaville? Yeah. He oh, does like, I think he does yeah. like, uh, um, I, that was who I was with the, the, the day of the Matt Simon. Cause I was, I Oh was really? With You're filming with Oompaville. I was filming with Oompaville and just went over and he lives in the middle of nowhere. So my phone. Yeah. He literally, literally lives in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. So like my, also my phone service was pretty shitty. That was another reason, but yeah. point being, uh, yeah, he, uh, I know he did an interview with him and just, you know, and never released it. Oompa, you know, Caleb, he has a certain edge to his brand that, I would imagine yeah, it's kind of similar Brian, to mine. I would say, yeah, yeah Brian's not going to probably be as like open with those guys. Cause he's more likely to probably try to, you know, a ask questions in a sort of a, you know, a, a joking way or whatever, but yeah. you know, everyone has a different sort of brand. Um, but yeah, yeah of I, course. I, I think he had talked about him. He just didn't even put it out. Cause it just didn't. It's him important. lying the entire yeah, time. And just, you know? Yeah. All right. So, uh, last, I think there's like a couple final ones here. Um, what made you decide to do an EDP documentary? I had a sh very short list after bo my list before Boogie was like a thousand potential things. And then after Boogie, I'm like, oh shit, okay, this is like the, the level. So I got down to like a pretty tight list um, yeah. that sort of would, I think would have been an appropriate follow-up. And um, I just hit up all the people on it and he was the one I was able to kind of get in and get access to and yeah um yeah that's kind of generally i mean it's not it's really not that deep i think there's a lot of very artsy i'd say dark documentary documentary producers that get very personally invested in the topic yeah before they go into it for me i just kind of look at it pretty plainly as long as i think that there could be something interesting people are interested in it and the person or the thing we're digging into is you know, now if I'm like super uninterested in the topic, like it's something I just don't care at all about. But yeah. I know I would say I wasn't like a huge fan of EDP or. Yeah, but uh, surely you knew about I, I just, them. I, I yeah. knew of the situation. So I, there was no big meaningful reason I started other than like, hey, I, he got he got back to me. Right. So right. It's like people could tell me all day. Hey, you should do a. I got a DM the other day. Hey, you should do an Elon Musk document. I'm like, yeah, I agree. That would be cool. Like. <laughs> If you know him, like, let me know or like, you know. But, yeah, if you can get a hold of him. Yeah. Because I feel like you kind of have this brand call. now where I feel like you kind of have this brand now where you're like, you're going to have the person you're talking about in the documentary. Right. I feel yeah, like, I, you know, I would you what, what the brand would definitely be 
some level of exclusive access, whether that's a yeah. person or maybe it's a thing, right? Maybe it's a right. Maybe it's like a to- about a topic, a broad topic, but there's like exclusive access, and I think that's what generally makes you know if you're gonna go do all this production, you have to get exclusive access because the guys, you know, if you're a commentary channel, you can pull tens of millions of views um, yeah. and, and create a video every day you know, but you don't have that exclusive access. So if you're going to spend all that time and money, at least bring something exclusive to the table. Well, of course, just, like uh, interviewing a person or yeah. maybe bring some sort of like info. Cause like I know in the early EDP days, a lot of the guys were interviewing his ex-girlfriends. They were interviewing yep. um, people close to him. His, like, I think some people tried to get a hold of his parents, which is like, I, I don't know about that one, but yeah. And obviously those ones are the ones that got tons of views. Yep. Right? Yeah. Like, Cause and people want, exclusive content that is you know they didn't think was going to exist right and yeah that, exactly that's what that's what is interesting and that's sort of the world i live in which unfortunately it takes a lot of time it takes a lot of money because also you're you're following reality it's not like um it's not even like an animation video that i can just sort of come up with anything and just animate it um right you have to sort of i guess orchestrate real life access right you ha- in that you ought to be patient and you know and um yeah so uh but no for him it was pretty much he got back to me and he also had a good attitude i mean it was well, he was ready to make the film we were we we're pretty much going together to make the same type of film that's the mm-hmm. other thing is like if you get started and it's pretty clear like hey they're trying to make one film and i'm trying to make something completely different it's just not going to be fun. And yeah, it's like not, not on the same page. Come out. Yeah, we were on the same page. Like there, we definitely butted heads. There were times that like he was fucking done, like a, right. a given day, and you know, I was trying to keep filming, and he was tired as fuck, and he was just like, "Bro, I gotta fucking like shut the fuck up." You yeah, know, exactly. You know, we butted heads a few times, but um, generally, I think we worked well together, and we were on the same page trying to make the same thing, and I think that'll you know come out in in the in the in the movie so this is kind of a an unrelated question uh but i'm just curious because you were hanging out with oompaville do you ever yeah. think like you're gonna do it like a nicado avocado documentary uh, you know i think had, that'd be extremely yeah, interesting we had like sort of brought it up because he had mentioned a few things about that and whatever you know i i think i had emailed him quite a few times because obviously uh and this was probably back in early last year but yeah didn't get back to me and i mean i would totally be down um but because I think that's like a rate up, like with the, with the interest, I wouldn't say he's fallen off, but there's definitely like an interesting yeah, like, no, situation honestly, I would, with I mean, him. There's stuff I've got, I'm doing the next one after EP will be someone that has definitely not fallen off, but is interesting right. and is probably, I would say 10 times more famous, I guess. than Wow. Than really? Is, wow. Uh, super, super kind of, and not even technically a YouTuber. So I, I definitely, um, you know, I'm into YouTube and a lot of my interests sort of fall in that. I was going to say, world. like, I feel like you kind of struck a gold mine when it comes to kind of um, like really focusing on YouTubers and people related to YouTube, because obviously most like Netflix documentaries, they don't even think about looking into content on the Internet. Yeah, but you have this guess, gold mine yeah, of just like interesting people. Don't really people. Get how big. Yeah, because unless you know EDP. Yeah. You don't realize how big. Like, cause like, if you just like type in ADP four or five, it's like, oh, okay. It's like a guy, I guess he had a YouTube channel. Oh, yeah. look at this one or two articles that like, you know, explain what happened. But like yeah. for people that know, ED, it's like whole, like I tell people like, yeah, I have an EDP doc. I'm like, holy shit. You have an... So it's like, yeah. I think that it's one of those things. There's just that distinction or that, that there's like two universes you live in, whether it's like, yeah. you're, you're either like an internet person that understands sort of YouTube lore and, and different, the, the the scale of how big someone like Chris Chant means to yeah. the world or somebody like even Boogie 298, like how strongly people feel yeah. about that. Well, you hear about these names all the time, like EDP, Boogie, like all these guys, but you don't actually know how deep yeah, it is until like you actually look into it. Old, yeah, you know, it's like, in the oh, my kid watches it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like, like you, you, you're you going to want to watch a Gypsy Rose documentary. You're going to want to yeah. watch the Nickelodeon Dan Schneider guy, right? Dan Schneider stuff, stuff yeah. Maybe a bit more accessible to that type of world. And and that's why, like, to me, it's like, like oh, you should make these for Netflix. I'm like, not only is that way less fun for me, like, the, yeah. you know, like, it's way more fun 
to see all the comments and to engage with people and to go meet Oompaville and to go do this and to, like that is way more fun than you know whether and also I have to imagine YouTube videos get more views than Netflix projects. I'm sure. At the end of the day, I think the whole thing with like when it comes to you being on Netflix is just your documents just seem like they're way too well done to be on sure. YouTube and yeah. not not making money. But, you know, I think that's yeah, the big no, thing. The, the money thing is definitely yeah. So that that is the that is the and also if you look at like mr beast you know like his videos are way too nice for youtube but oh he's, absolutely he's he's leveraged himself in other ways to kind of create a sort of a business model for that so i would say um yeah dude I mean, we'll see how the edp does and i have a one or one more after that for sure and or, or one or yeah two. yeah i'm but looking yeah, forward I to definitely it definitely need this to uh if you know unless it's yeah definitely need the patreon to sort of click but I'll Absolutely. probably, you know, keep going. It's it is fun to get these out. I mean, the process of making it is fucking very it's a, uh, yeah. It's, yeah, it's not. It's, I wouldn't say it's like fun. It's definitely just yeah. labor. It's like a fun well, I'd say like same life. with like Mr. Beast. Like you can tell he has fun in his videos, but you can imagine he's exhausted by the end of like filming and stuff. Oh, but yeah. at least he gets paid. <laughs> That's the thing. At least yeah, he is yeah. a very wealthy yeah. person. Uh, so the last question we're going to end on is just, do you think the documentary could lead to EDP's arrest? Oh, you know, I really don't know. I mean, um, I don't know enough about like law and to what extent any yeah. thing that someone's discussing can be used in that sense. I can just say he's very uh, matter of fact and plain with how, what, what he, what he did and, and comes you could call it say comes clean. You could say that yeah. he just addresses it very head, you know, head on. Um, I don't, I really don't know. It's just um, hard to talk. Cause even me, I have like very limited legal knowledge and most of it is Canadian. So I don't really know the laws of America. So I don't know yeah, if also like, the like police my, could use. Yeah. It's not my intent as much as I'm sure there's a huge audience. People that would want me to like go in with the intent of, I'm not, I'm not like a vigilante police force in any right. sense. And I, I don't even really want a reputation particularly of someone that's going to use access to people that maybe, you know, are accused of criminal activity and yeah. using that access to sort of, you know, put them, you know, into jail or something. So I, I you know, whatever ends up happening, I can't stop, you know, uh, law enforcement from watching it, but I'm certainly right. not going into it with the intent of like, Oh, let me, you know, kind of film this and you know, put them. Well, in that's jail that's the thing. It's like I'm, I like how you're open with that because I feel like there's a lot of people who will get into this kind of content and be like, "No, I'm trying to get this guy arrested. I'm trying my best to, you know, uh, do what I can to get this guy put in jail." But I think, like in terms of you, you're knowledgeable that he has a current investigation going on, and you're just kind of like trying to make an interesting and uh, kind of informative document about everything. It's not yeah, like you're trying no, to just, pose yourself just, as this like hero who's like swooping in to be a vigilante. Yeah, no, I mean, I like, and also even to the extent I was going to do that, like, what am I going to do that on the hundred thousand people that do this every year? Yeah, yeah exactly. They're, 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 like, even to the extent that there are people that try to meet with minors and to the extent I can stop it, I would obviously do so. Yeah, of um, course. But in the in the realm of the nature of what i'm doing i'm here to tell interesting stories and to get give people something interesting to watch and have fun on a friday night and kick back and you know kind of yeah, escape sure. their day for a few hours and if i if i get known for fucking like trying to you know co you know put people in jail that are subjects i don't think there's going to be many more like interesting documentaries i can make that involve those people so i just right. try to be professional and try to be honest with the person as what i'm going to do what i'm not going to do i think with bryant like we were really we worked well together and i was to everything that's in the film he knows was filmed and vice yeah. versa if i wasn't going to film something i would tell him we're just kind of very clear and open with each other and i think that like you know, there's all these. Do you, like, do you feel like though? Like, do you feel you're, like you're going to get a lot of criticism for that though? Oh, for sure. There's going to be, I would imagine, five or ten percent of the audience that just like, no matter what's in it, uh, just uh, you know, I'm 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 dead in the water. Right. right? It, it, They're going to be like, you're uh, hanging out with him, you're giving him publicity, which I, yeah. I kind of I don't really understand that. Like giving someone a platform, I think that's kind of like the double edged sword. It's like, sure, do people have an argument saying that? Oh, you're giving this predator a platform, but it's like 
I just don't really understand that because it's like yeah, you're not really giving him a platform. A different definition of what a platform means. In some yeah. sense, I am giving him a platform. Um, and in other senses, I, I don't know to the extent that that is even a, uh, that is, um, I, I would just, my question to anyone would be if you can watch the film and if you can come away and say, Hey, you know what? I really want to go meet with minors. From yeah, exactly. If anyone, right. If anyone can genuinely say that, I'll be like, wow. Okay. Well, let me, let me look back on the edit and see how I can not encourage criminal activity. But I right. don't really suspect anyone's going to come away. But I, but I will say there are parts of this that will show aspects of him that are positive in some sense, yeah. and that is that is the um, that is the complicated reality of people. There are, can be people that have yeah. actions that are that 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 are particularly. Well, that was kind of like one of my. That was one of my criticisms. Was like hopefully you don't humanize EDP. Well, to be fair, I've kind of changed my opinion well, a little bit. I well, think it's I mean, okay you know, as course, long depending as you... on your, also your definition of humanized, because ultimately, yeah. whether like it or not, he is a human. And if you're going to make a documentary yeah, of about it, the, you're going to see the fact that he is a human. And everyone, yeah. people, even Osama bin Laden or anyone, is more complicated than one would want to credit. It, yeah. it's, it's it's the natural inclination for us to sort of cast a, a singular sort of definition upon people that did things that, that we find... Uh, particularly negative, but well, like, you really for instance, get anyone, you know, yeah. people are complicated and people, you, people that are quote unquote evil have a lot of positive aspects and negative. I think it's to me, I'm just mindful of what is my intent, you know, and, and because I don't really have a pointed intent other than to show something interesting, I'm not coming into this with like, Oh, I hate, I really, 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 obviously I don't like, the idea of people being predators and oh, of course, I don't minors. think anybody does yet to that. But at the same time, it's not like my life's mission to stop that or vice versa. Uh, so I don't have any really pointed goal other than to just tell an interesting story that that brings yeah. to life something interesting. So well, I think I that's just point. that's yeah. I think that's just different perspectives, right? Coming from me, someone who does hate EDP, right? And I can I completely understand your standpoint. Like I'm not well, trying to like I, I can honestly say, and I'm not like this doesn't make me some moral. I just don't hate anybody, right? I, right. Because I, I, I am. That's like part of my personality. Is I just don't get super. I, I think for me, I, it's I have a, I tend to have a very naturalist explanation of almost everything that happens in the world. A lot right. of people, um, that maybe think a bit more emotionally. There's nothing wrong with thinking emotionally. Cast out words like good and evil and good and bad and you know they it's sort of these more um, spiritual explanations for things that that are met with sort of emotional reactions versus like, hey, at the end of the day, every most pretty much everything that happens has some type of natural explanation that is just a matter oh, of fact, right? Yeah, I mean, the, what he did, you could describe it as evil, or you could give a scientific explanation for what happened and why he did it. You right? Know, there are it's a you know there's a certain percent of the population that wants to go out. And it has a certain predisposition towards attraction to minors. There's a certain predis uh, uh, pop percent of the population that is going to, you know, act upon that. It's super unfortunate and it's um, very painful for society. Yeah. And we definitely don't want to encourage that. But, you know, I mean, that's well, like, that. it, you know, like my it, whole my whole outlook is like, I understand these people are sick. Right. I like I'm not oblivious of that. I understand this is a mental illness along with many, many other things. At the end of the day, my main thing that I want done is just to get more people protected. The less children being groomed, obviously, the better. And if that means, you know, obviously, worst case scenario, what happens to these predators or if they get put into prison or they get rehabilitated. Yeah, so at the end I, of the day, my I, main concern is just victims. It's just we need to start protecting the victims more and stop being so uh was it called like like for instance i don't know if you're familiar with vitaly he yeah. recently caught a predator and the predator got socked in the head and he like ended up falling back and cracking his head open or something and yeah, then going to the hospital so. and i was like okay well he probably might have been arrested by vitaly's investigation but now you have this guy who says he's a father now probably going to go to jail now was yeah. that worth it because this guy was probably already going to jail so is it worth it that now you are probably going to jail too on attempt to murder charges because this guy almost cracked his head open on the sidewalk? So it's like, yeah. that's kind of where I'm at where it's like, okay, well, you're 
dumb action might actually get this guy out of jail now because you went up there and assaulted him. Yeah. You know, so I understand the frustration, but it's like, you can't let that carry you. You know what I mean? That's why I have so many issues with these predator poachers is because it just seems like they just either let their emotions get ahead of them or they're just clout chasers. Yeah. I do think that generally the content that is bringing to light things like this, whether it's my documentary or even, um, even the stings in general, I don't think that when you think about like the Alex Rosen sting or even the Gideon sting or whatever, yeah. Well, they, you know, could have been conducted a little bit better, maybe led to some type of like legal implication. Um, I don't think that like even in that, I don't think anyone's watching that and be like, oh, I, you know, I think the world is slightly less likely to act upon inclinations that are harmful to yeah. us, right? So yeah. even to the extent that they could have been improved, I do think that anything that sort of um, makes uh, the public less likely to act on negative impulses one being you know sexual desire towards someone that can't consent right Uh, i do think that anything in that realm is probably positive and i would imagine to whatever extent i can't think you're going to watch this documentary and not think oh you know let's be honest let's say let's say two percent of the world two percent i don't know i'm just tossing let's say one percent of the population has an inclination to do something sexual with a minor I'm sure there are a bunch of people that will watch the documentary that probably were maybe somewhere on the fence, as as sort right. of eerie as that sounds. Um, and uh, and I I would imagine that anyone that watches that or anyone that watches any of those catches that didn't result in prosecution uh, are going to be like, yeah, I'm going to think a little bit more about right. any of those thoughts, right? Well, the um, the thing with the, like the psychology of these predators too is like. Like EDP, like when he did the first, he was so on the fence. He's like, I don't know if I should meet you. I'm scared. Like, what if this is the police? But he still went to go through with it. Yeah. Right. So th- it's just such a confusing thing. Cause it's like, I, I honestly, right. And I feel like most normal people, I can't comprehend throwing your life away for something like that. I just, I can't comprehend it. So it's, it's interesting that you brought that up where it's like, maybe some of these predators are going to see the thing or people who are like yeah, on the fence about struggles. it. And everyone- yeah. Yeah. You know, there are negative impulses that you have that you struggle with, whether that's your diet and, you know, you know, you shouldn't be eating a certain Dude, it's way. Video games, like, it's video games, bro. It's video games. Video games, 100 percent. And like there's a thought I shouldn't do this, but let me play or let me not play. It's yeah, real, it's just there are people that their impulse is something that's harmful to people. And yeah. that is a tough situation. It's, it can be deemed as evil. It can be um you know, looked at in all types of ways, but it is the reality. And I think that like when you can process it through like, all right, well, what do I struggle with? What is the impulse that I deal with? It's, and, you know, I think you have to be grateful if your impulse is not criminal, right? I mean, right. nobody's going to put you in jail for playing video games, but in a different reality, if, you know, your brain developed, you had a different, little bit different environment, maybe that impulse is something that you know, is wants to cause harm to someone. Yeah. So, but the, the it, thing that I struggle with though, is like, this is really hard for, I think a lot of people is I think there's a difference between having an impulse and then acting upon that impulse. I know there's a lot of like, there's the whole term of non offending predators, like these guys who are attracted to minors, but never would a million years actually go after a minor, yeah, you know, but no, then it boils really, down to, is it because it's illegal or is it because it's morally wrong? Yeah. And should really, they go get help? Yeah, right. It's really complicated. I'm not, I, I, you know, I, I, uh, I only know so much and, you know, that yeah. goes, kind of goes into a conversation about free will and to what extent oh, of course. Yeah. Do people wake up every day with the ability to make a, a, a choice from scratch versus your, your decisions are informed by, you know, so much years of contextualized experience and whatever. I would say that like, you know, I mean, from a scientific standpoint, it's, um, yeah, even then, I because we do inter- some interviews with some uh, um, sort of medical and uh, sort of uh, scientific experts in this field. Oh, awesome. Yeah, And even sure. then, it, it's sort of a conflicting topic because there's a lot, of, um, a lot of that field that sort of symbolically has to say something that sort of appeases a certain hatred for the criminal acts. Um, but at the same time, oh, there, cool. you know, there, there is... There's some level of science that says part a lot of a lot of this is genetic, but how could you say for sure to what extent it is? Yeah. I just think in general, it's good uh, to have a things like to catch a predator 
things like that that um you know i don't think i advocate for like punching people and, and whatever but yeah um but but things that sort of cast out a big public net to say hey anyone that's thinking about doing this don't do it um, right you know or, or, i think deterrence or, yeah. is like really important when it comes to this kind of stuff so that's why i've always sang praise for like chris hansen and even like amateur predator poachers i've never been against them because you know unfortunately a lot of the times they don't do it properly but at least it shows like hey if you do this there might be an adult waiting for you and it could be way worse for you yeah or maybe like join the police i mean if you're that right. interested and maybe like i think there's a good way to do amateur uh vigilante stuff but if you're like maybe you don't you're not organized enough just become a police officer or something well that's unfortunately that's the whole edp situation it just seems like a lot of people who just were too what was the word like gun ho yeah. so like with alec Ross and stuff jd on stuff like that i feel like mostly everything that has led to edp to being in your documentary could have been handled so much better yeah like just yeah. in a nutshell basically but yeah i mean yeah, it's, no. uh, it's uh it's a it's a it's a tough and complicated topic but uh yeah dude i mean i appreciate you having me on i would say yeah that was awesome man it was awesome you swinging by and yeah dude i, I know keep it up with your channel dude i i, you know, I, I know you like if you look at you know your top video it's it's that exclusive access stuff so just just keep up the grind i mean when i i mean i'm 31 i did tons of different little, like little youtube channels and tried different stuff and some things worked some things didn't but just just keep up the grind bro and keep keep making content going live and uh trying to improve your videos week over week and you know yeah thank you i appreciate that yeah, I'm just out here trying to trying to do my best, you know. Yeah, dude, absolutely. Thanks for having. But yeah, me. I appreciate uh, you coming in, man. Yeah, we'll have to uh, catch up uh, later when the film comes out. Yeah, I'll, I'll be really interested in uh, talking to you after after it comes out. Yeah, dude, I'm, I'm I'm sure I'll see your stream in the meantime. So. Yeah, I'm sure you will. That'd be awesome, man. All right, thanks so much for stopping by. Yeah, later. But this one I always miss. Just go.